May we notice that you truly with us here and now. Amen. Amen. Our first worship song is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. If you're comfortable and able, please rise. Number 196 in your hymnal if you're using a hymnal. <laughs> Everything else is on the back of your bulletin as far as dates in the upcoming month. 
Uh, you notice in your pews there are Christmas offering envelopes if you're not going to be here for the holidays, if you're going to travel with family and friends. Please consider giving your donation prior to leaving. If you are online, please go to www.goodshepherdumc.com. Thank you so much. Oh, wait. Yes. I'm sorry. One more thing. Christmas socks. I forgot. I guess you did. I there we go. There we go. Right, right. Don't anyone get hurt in the showing of your socks? <laughs> <laughs> Carol said this morning her husband said her husband said you're not wearing a dress to church. <laughs> she said, but I gotta wear my Christmas socks. Right. I can't. <laughs> That was it. Thank you for everyone with your Christmas spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Our next worship song is Have Thine Own Way, Lord, number 382 in your hymnal. If you're comfortable and able, please rise. <laughs> Child in her old age, and she who 
was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord your servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Fancy songs and all. <laughs> Take a moment and pray with me, please. Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be pleasing unto you. Let all that I do and all that I say, Lord, bring honor and glory to you and to you alone. I ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So in our God with Us series, we've talked about God with Zachariah, the skeptic. We talked about God with Joseph, the dutiful. And today we talk about God with Mary, the faithful. Mary's life and role in the history of salvation is foreshadowed in the Old Testament, and the events of her life are recorded in the New Testament. Did you realize that? Did you realize that in the Old Testament, in Isaiah 7, 14, that it speaks of the virgin mother of Emmanuel? And it says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. That was prophesied some 800 years before it happened. And just think of the things that we expect to happen like that. The prophet foretells an extraordinary future sign that a virgin, without the cooperation of a man, would give birth to a child. And that child is God with us. This child would remedy the great trials of division facing all the peoples of Israel. Mary loved God and wanted to serve him with all her heart. But she was just a poor girl from an insignificant little town, from a humble little family, with little expectation that her life was going to be any different than anyone else's. And then the angel Gabriel comes to visit Mary to tell her that she's been chosen and favored by God to be the mother of his son. Despite her own fear, she exhibited great courage and character. I am the Lord's servant, she says. May your word to me be fulfilled. Mary also exhibited great courage and character during Jesus' earthly life, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but imagine you're this young girl going about your day, and all of a sudden an angel visits you, and you're being told that you're going to be the mother of God's son. What would your reaction have been? Think of what it took, the amount of faith and trust and love that it took for this young girl to be able to say, May your word to me be fulfilled. Last week we talked about why did God choose Joseph to be the earthly father to Jesus? And we talked about, we remembered that Joseph was a righteous man. Joseph was a man who obeyed God, a man who listened to God's directions that were given to him in his dreams, not once, not twice. Anybody remember how many times? Four. Good, I'm glad you remembered. The four different dreams, and he listened every time out of his faith in God. So now we reflect on Mary. For anyone who is a mom, we know how precious the gift of motherhood is. We thank God for all mothers, our grandmothers, our own mothers, the mothers of our children, and the mothers in our church. Mothers are special to us, but they're also extremely special to God. We know this because God created mothers. We also know that moms are special to God because some 2,000 years ago, God chose a woman to have his son. The Lord of all creation, who could create anything he wanted, he decided 
that it was that important that his child be carried in the womb of a woman for nine months. Did you ever think about it like that? I mean, God could have just had a son. He could have changed everything. But he chose this very special way. And here in God's word, the Lord's mother shows us the best way for us to live our lives. She truly is a role model. Now, in order to be a mom, I think you have to be a planner. Because there's no way that anybody without a plan could juggle all the things a mother juggles. Amen? Amen. Amen. Moms have to have a plan. But God also has plans. And his plans are always more important than ours. And that's why Psalm 146 says this. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the maker of heaven and earth and the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. So how often do we make plans that go awry, that God has a different plan? Why does that happen? I'll answer that with scripture readings because it really doesn't matter what my opinion is of why our plans go astray. It really doesn't matter what I think. I want to give you the answers that the Bible tells us. He sees the future, God sees the future that we don't see. Now we talked about that last week, the same thing when we talked about why don't I get what I pray for. It's because God knows better. God's plans are different because his ways are higher than our ways. Isaiah 55, 8 says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Then in verse 9, he says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. You see, we plan, but he directs. Proverbs 16, 9 says, The heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. And then Proverbs 19, 21 say, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Trust. We have to have trust. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Boy, we struggle with that, don't we? We struggle with just because we don't understand it, we don't want to have to do it. And Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. You see, because God's plan is always to magnify the Son of God, but is that always our plan? Or are our plans more about us? As I've said, I am a planner. I need every day I have a plan. Because if I don't, I get distracted very easily. And I go off on doing this, that, and the end of the day. I was like, oh boy, all this stuff I was supposed to do today, I didn't get done. So I have to have a plan. I'm a list maker. I, you know, at this age, I'm going to write down the plan because I'll forget the plan. So I write it down. But I wonder, I was thinking this week, I wonder what Mary had planned that day. What were her plans? Was she going to hang out with friends? Was she going to go home and do chores? Was she, who knows what she was going to do? And I guess in the end, it doesn't matter what her plans were. Because God had a bigger and better plan for her life. And she began to fulfill it to the fullest. That's what she was doing in verse 38. When she says, I am the Lord's servant, let it be to me as you have said. I didn't argue. She didn't disagree. She didn't say, oh, well, wait a minute, let me go home and finish this first. Let me finish what I want to do first. She simply says, let it be to me as you have said. That's the kind of thing God wants us to say today. He wants us to have that same attitude 
that same heart, a heart that embraces all that God has planned for your life. You see, we must have confidence in God's word. Mary told Gabriel, let it be to me according to your word. You see, she agreed with the word. She believed in God's word. She trusted in God's word. She accepted God's word. She knew that this message was what was to be. If we read further today, we read how Elizabeth bragged on Mary when she said, Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Elizabeth could see how Mary just believed. Sometimes God asks us to believe things that just seem too good to be true. Well, at least that's what we think. But you see, with God, all things are possible. Think about the thief on the cross next to Jesus. That thief trusted in the Lord. In Luke 23, 42, he says to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And then in the next verse, Jesus says to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And the thief had to be thinking, what? What just happened? In paradise? Me? Today? I'm a thief. I'm hanging on the cross. I I'm supposed to die and you're telling me I'm going into paradise? But see, with God, all things are possible. We need confidence in God's word, even when he tells us things that are too good to be true. And you have to remember how well Mary would have known scripture. She knew that this birth was foretold. They knew it was going to happen. They didn't carry around the Bible, remember, and read it and study it. They didn't have the Bible then. But this was what their parents taught their kids. They studied. They knew the scriptures. They knew that this was foretold, that there was going to be a virgin birth. Although I'm sure, to say the least, she was a little bit surprised when she was the one chosen to fulfill this prophecy of some 800 years ago. Now, if we're going to have confidence in God's word and pursue God's plan for our life, then we also need to make a commitment to God's work. We must not be too proud to think of ourselves as servants of God. And we need to consent to God's will. Let it be according to your word, said Mary. Mary consented to God's will even though times were going to be tough. And she knew that. 33 years later, Mary stood at the foot of the cross and had to watch her son die. But Mary believed. She trusted God's plan in her life. She trusted God's plan enough to say, let it be, according to your word. I know I keep repeating that sentence, but it really is important. How many of us have just said, let it be to me according to your word, God, instead of trying to control what's happening to us? Let it be according to God's word. God asks us to trust him in the tough times. And we ought to trust him because he does love us. He does have a plan for our lives, and he's going to be there with us, through us, and for us at all times. If we read further again in today's story when Mary goes to visit Elizabeth, why did she go? Well, the angel had told her, remember, that Elizabeth was going to have a child, but Mary knew that her cousin was a godly woman. And Mary needed help. It's not easy being a mother, amen? Amen. Amen. It's not easy to be a mother-to-be, let alone to be a mother-to-be to the Son of God. I can't imagine the, the thoughts going through a young, a young lady's head. And it's not always to be a dad. It's not always easy to be a son or a daughter. It's not always easy to be a friend. And that's why every one of us at some times needs help. Don't isolate yourself. 
Don't hesitate to reach out for that help. That's one of the worst things we can do when we are struggling in whatever situation we are in. Mary reminds us that when we do seek help, be sure to get it from godly friends so that you get good help. Mary's response to Elizabeth's greeting, yet yeah, she didn't magnify herself. She could have stood there all proud, look at me, God chose me, aren't I special? Right? She could have been all puffed up, or however you want to say it, magnifying herself. But instead, she magnified the Lord. It is the first line of Mary's song of praise, also known as the Magnificent. The King James Version says, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. Mary's soul, her whole being, magnifies the Lord. Thinking, maybe start thinking about a magnifying glass. Now, a magnifying glass bends light waves so that objects appear, what? Much bigger, so that we can see them more clearly. Right? Like a magnifying glass, Mary makes visible the invisible God. She is open to God and what he wants to do in her life, so much so that she magnifies him. Important, important, important. She did not magnify, I don't mean to say that God is so small, she had to make him appear bigger. It's our spiritual vision that is so bad that is so small. That's why she needed to magnify it. Praising God, you see, brings us closer to him. So I got thinking this week, what do we magnify? Not all good stuff, right? What about when we have something that bothers us and we just keep magnifying it. How many of us have done it? You roll it over and over and over in your head and it becomes this whole big thing in your head. Have you ever had a disagreement with someone, right? And you keep thinking about, oh, what you didn't say, what you should have said, what you, you know, you, want, you didn't get the last word in is the bottom part. But you wanted to make sure they understood your point and, they, and you keep going over and over and then you finally see this person again and you say, you know, when we talked last Tuesday, I wanted to tell you, and they said, what are you talking about? I don't even remember. Because we magnify it in our own heads. We magnify our problems in life when we share our marital stresses with the world. Social media. We put too much stuff on social media. We magnify ourselves and our troubles when we don't see the needs of other people. When the focus of, of our life is on I. When we put everything you think and feel for the world to know. When we spend time with people who are not godly. We're magnifying and creating more and more stress for ourselves. Where if we took that same amount of time and used it to magnify the Lord, think how different. Think how many nights rest you lost worrying about this conversation you had with somebody a week ago that they're not even thinking twice about. Let it go. Let it be. We magnify the Lord when we participate here in worship, when we make this a priority. We magnify the Lord when we regularly meditate and speak on God's promises. When was the last time you thought about all the things that God promises you? He promises to strengthen you. He promises to give you rest. He promises to take care of all your needs. He promises to answer your prayers. Promises to work everything out for your good. It doesn't say he promises to work them out as you desire, but for your good. He promises to be with you. He promises to protect you. He promises you freedom from sin. So many promises, that's just a little little baby portion of what the promises of God are. But yet how much time do we think or do we spend thinking about that? How much time do we spend just thinking about all the stuff that we waste our time on? We can magnify the Lord when we share our love for Jesus with others. 
When you share to others, I went to church on Sunday, and I'm glad I did. Won't you come with me? When we engage in fellowship with others, when we discuss the scripture, when we pray, we're magnifying the Lord. We must remember Mary's great faith, her unwavering hope, and her patience. I'm sure she had a lot of patience. Mary waited patiently upon the Lord. She patiently accepted all the contradictions, all the sufferings that God allowed her to undergo. She patiently accompanied Jesus on the way to the cross. And most especially, Mary patiently stood beneath that cross, suffering with Jesus for the salvation of the world. There was no I for her while she stood there and watched her son die. She was thinking about the salvation of the world. She was trusting in God's plan. Mary teaches us to have a pure heart. Rid yourself of all those unpure thoughts. Mary was obedient. So let us this week think about Mary, how her life should be a guide to ours. And you know what? We have a lot more in common with Mary than we think we do. Like Mary in verse 47, all of us can rejoice in God as our Savior. We can magnify the Lord because he is watching over us too. Mary said he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant and God has his loving eye on each one of us today. Let us magnify Jesus and not ourselves. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us join together now and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing song is God Reshki Merry Gentlemen. If you're comfortable and able, please rise.
us not magnify ourselves and our stresses and our schedules and I'm, I'm too busy and I'm, I'm all this and I'm, 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 I'm. Let us magnify the Lord on how great thou art. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.